guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a long overdue video for you guys. I owe you guys an updated Anki tutorial. So here it is. I made one a few months ago when I had just started using Anki and I really didn't know enough about it to give you guys a solid tutorial. But now that I've been using Anki for quite a few months, I feel a bit more seasoned to give you guys a proper tutorial. So the purpose of today's video is to teach you about Anki. What is it? When to use it? Why do you use it? And then I want to dive into the settings and different ways that you can optimize your Anki game. And I actually have a special guest in today's video. His name is Victor. He's going into his third year of medical school. His Anki game is on an entirely different level and I want him to teach you guys a little bit more about what he does to optimize his whole thing that he's got going on. And I think it'll be really helpful for you guys. However, if you're looking for a video that goes into the really specific details and the whole interface of Anki and what different settings are, why they work and all of that stuff. This isn't necessarily the video for you. This is just going to be, if you will, a high yield Anki tutorial. Everything that you need to know really to get started and to learn effectively. If you're not a medical student and you came across this video, don't click out. This video will help you as well. Before we get started, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and join our herd. We are are happy and we are a great time and then also hit the bell down below for notifications and if you're not already following me on Instagram go ahead and follow me my handle is at Rachel Southerd and yeah let's get started so what is Anki? Anki is a way to learn through flashcards and it's called spaced repetition learning. And the idea behind this is that whatever concept or fact that you are exposed to, the more that you're exposed to it at these specific intervals, the better recall, the better retention. It is for long-term retention. It is a great tool for learning. However, it is a commitment. It is something that you start from day one and you keep going through with it every single day. There is this thing called do cards. So you get these cards that you're supposed to do every single day you have to complete these cards and you really should it's not something that you let pile on and you do a few per day that's not how it works and that's not the best and most effective way to use Anki for long-term retention so Anki is free to download for your laptop or your desktop however if you want to learn on the go with your phone or your iPad it is I believe $25 on the App Store so just be mindful of that however you will be making your cards on a laptop or whatever kind of setup that you have so you it, it is free and it is just a luxury to be able to have it on your phone and be on the go with it there are a lot of different add-ons that you can use however these are the ones that I use heat map image occlusion the progress bar frozen fields and the button colors alrighty so this is my heat map I like it it's front and center it keeps me accountable with doing cards and tells me when I've missed a day like right here it tells me how many cards I've done in a particular day then it could even give you an estimate of how many cards you might hit on a future date moving on to the progress bar this really serves no purpose other than to keep your Anki playful it just will move forward as you progress through your cards that you're doing really no purpose I just like it keeps it fun Moving forward onto the button colors, this also serves no purpose other than keeping your Anki more appealing to the eye. And lastly, image occlusion. I like this best for anatomy. As you can see, it can cover up specific labels that you want and then you can identify them. And yeah, I will show you frozen fields later in this video. Okay, and now I'm gonna go into the organization of Anki, how to make decks, how to organize everything, and then how to make a card. Very straightforward. Okay, so let's create a deck. Go ahead and label it whatever you want. I'm titling mine YouTube. Then after this, I'm gonna create another deck, and this will be a little sub deck underneath. This helps you organize your Anki. This is how I do mine. So you'll create the new one, put it underneath. Now you can see it drops down. Okay, so now I'm going to add a card. So this is the type of card that I choose. I think normally you start out with basic. So I use this card type for whatever reason. Don't ask why. And now I'm going to type in whatever I want. And then I'm going to press Command Shift C. And then this will hide the answer to the card. And so this is the closed deletion type card. And then in the extra box, I'm just typing any additional information. And this is the frozen fields add-on that I was talking about earlier. This just freezes whatever you have in the box that you selected. So as you can see, it moved forward. It just saves you time. So now I'm typing another card. Hi, my name is 
Command Shift C, Rachel, and this will be another card. So now I'm doing image occlusion. I hit that little icon in the corner and then I'm going to select the photo that I want to occlude. And so I'm using this for anatomy again. So I'm going to occlude this term and then I'm gonna select a few other terms to hide as well. And so you can either hide all or guess one or you can guess one, hide one. So I like to hide them all and guess one, just whatever your preference is, play around with it. It. So when you hit browse, go to the current deck, you can see these are the cards that we just made. So I'm going to study now and let's see what closed deletion looks like. So Anki, I'm going to press good because I knew it. Hi, my name is Rachel, pressing good again. This is the image occlusion card that you'll see. This is how it works. The last thing that I want to discuss before we get into the settings and different ways to optimize your Anki game, I use a Nintendo Switch controller for Anki and I love it. It has saved me so much time and honestly, ergonomically, it does help. Yeah, so that's basically it and I'm done with my part of the video. Let's see what Victor's up to. Um, Victor? Hey, uh, hey Rachel, how's it going? What are you doing? Uh, just, uh, just doing some Anki. Hey guys, I'm Victor, here to talk to you guys about some of the things I've done with Anki to make it a better experience. First thing I want to talk about is the vertical monitor. I swear by this because it completely changed my Anki game. And the reason I love it so much is because oftentimes I found myself wanting to look at multiple pictures at the same time. And I couldn't really do that with a widescreen monitor, so a vertical monitor that's set up in portrait mode really allowed me to see multiple images at the same time. So now I'm going to talk to you guys about my dual monitor setup. And this is something that I really recommend mostly for people who are making their own Anki cards, which I also recommend you do to some degree. You don't have to do it for all your cards. There's a lot of pre-made decks out there. But the reason I love it so much is that I can have one monitor with just a bunch of images or research material. And on the other monitor, I can have Anki set up. And so it really allows me to take screenshots and go quickly back and forth between the two screens. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is my standing desk. And for me, this has been an absolute game changer. It really allows me to change my posture with the click of a button. Oftentimes in med school, we're sitting for eight to 10 hours a day, sometimes more than that. And that can be really taxing on our bodies. So I invested in this desk and this one in particular is electronic and this one's a little bit pricey. I kind of splurge on my desk and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description box. But otherwise I highly recommend it, especially in medical school because it can really save you a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. So now I'm going to talk to you guys about my Anki controller. It's allowed me to sit back in a, on a couch or in a chair and do Anki from a distance. I recommend uh, whatever one is in your budget. It doesn't really matter which one you get. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the Anki settings. And this can be a pretty complicated subject and I won't get into all the nitty gritty details here. But I do recommend that at the very least you get to know a little bit more about the Anki settings because the default settings are not really optimized for long-term attention and learning. I tend to use uh, longer intervals in Anki because there was a big study done about this, how longer intervals are actually better for your attention. And I recommend you do the same, and, and so I can show you guys a little bit more about that uh, right here on my computer. So here we are in my Anki, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click this gear icon here to the right of the deck, and go ahead and go into options. And what you'll notice is that uh, right now I have the options group set to the default. I highly recommend going into the Anki manual and getting more familiar with some of these settings. What I'm going to talk about today, though, are just a couple of these settings and why I think that it's a good idea to change them from the default settings. This column right here and this column right here. Turns out that it's better to have a longer interval. So what do I mean by that? So with Anki's current settings, when you get a card correct, it's going to show up again in 10 minutes or maybe slightly less. Let's say you're going pretty quickly, it'll show up in slightly less than 10 minutes. Let's say you get that card correct in 10 minutes. What's gonna happen next is it's gonna go into the graduating interval. So your default setting is most likely one day. Now the card is set to come back tomorrow. And let's say you get it correct again tomorrow. Now it's gonna go through Anki's natural sequence and just progress through a series of steps. You're basically seeing the card in one minute, 10 minutes, in one day, and then following that, it will be in four days. So looking here at my settings, you'll notice that uh, in the steps column, that uh, my numbers are quite different from the Anki default. So instead of a one minute and 10 minute interval, I actually have a 10 minute, 1440 and 7200 minutes as my interval. So what this means is, is that when I get a card correctly today, let's say it's a new card that I just created today and I get it correct, it'll go into the next interval, which for me is one day, because 1440 here is equivalent to one day. 
And let's say I wake up tomorrow, I have my coffee, and then I sit down and do my Anki, and I get the card again in my reviews, and I get that card correct again, it'll go to the next interval, which is 7200, which is five days. And let's say I get the card correct after five days. What would happen in this case is it'll go to the graduating interval. And for me, it's 14 days. And this might seem like a long time. The research also confirms this that longer intervals are better. So it's actually good for our minds to have to sit on a card for a little bit. That sort of cognitive load that you force your brain to go through is good for your, your memory. Even if you get the card wrong, if I was to flip the card in 14 days and get it wrong, and then I saw the back of the card and I'm like, oh, that aha moment is actually very valuable for learning. These settings are not going to be ideal for every situation. You know, sometimes we have to cram for exams that are coming up in a few days or a week or two. And having a graduating interval of 14 days is just not realistic. Now that said, I highly recommend for you guys to play around with these settings and figure out what works best for you. Now I know that that was kind of a lot guys, but I promise you that the more time you spend learning about Anki settings, the more valuable it'll be for you. And now back to Rachel. All right, you guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up, please. And if you do have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves, be kind to yourselves, continue to work hard and all that good stuff. Okay, bye. And also subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Okay, bye. Well, I'm